Trust me, I'm no angel. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Pussy, and welcome back to Hot or and today we'll be reviewing episode 3 of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season 7. Today our winners were challenged to try their luck in the realness of Fortune Ball, joined by none other than the actual Vanna White from Wheel of Fortune, who by the way has been hosting that show for like 40 years now, and fun fact has served over 6,000 looks without a single repeat. How's that for iconicism? And the three looks our winners had to serve were Vanna White realness in her honor, before and after, which was a sort of blend of two Two pop culture references, and realness of fortune eleganza that they constructed there using materials provided to them based on a color. So we'll be breaking down all 24 looks today and ranking the queens from rottest rat to hottest hot based on how I thought they did in the ball. And when we get to Raja's section, we'll be covering a little bit of silly online drama between her and Miss Violet Tchotchke. It seems Miss Violet's been handing out quite a few boots as one of the new hosts of Fashion Photo Review and has sent the drag race world into quite the frenzy this week. So Make sure to stay tuned in to catch up on all the queen's reactions to what's been going on. But first, let's talk about the game that I just can't put down, Raid Shadow Legends. Click the link in the description of my video or scan my QR code right there to start downloading Raid while I tell you more about some of my favorite champions. There's Glacea's Soul Guide, a literal ice queen with wings and a sword made out of ice who can freeze the entire enemy team. Need I say more? There's Cleoptrix, a legendary attack champion that can place and exploit hex debuffs, and Cardio, who's totally but who can also crit buff your entire team and make the PvP arena a breeze. And you can never have enough champions. So let's head on over to the summoning portal and get some new ones. Ooh, I got Kunoichi who can place leech and weaken debuffs, and Umatogi, an epic attack-based champion who can cut right through tough defensive walls with her size. And the other thing I love about Raid is there's always something new going on, like this month's Deliana Chase event. In this event, both new and veteran players can get Deliana added to their champion at team for free just by logging into the game for seven days between now and July 20th. And if you're new to Raid Shadow Legends, then listen up. First, make sure to enter promo code MYDELIANA to get your hands on 50 XP brew and a ton of silver. And when you download Raid by using my link in the description of my video or scanning my QR code, all new players will get a free starter pack worth almost $40, including free champions Miseracord, Tiger Soul, and Romero, 10 Magic XP brew, 10 Force XP brew, and 10 Spirit XP brew. Don't miss your chance. Download Raid today. Thanks, Raid, for sponsoring today's video. And without further ado, Let's get this wheel of spin. At the bottom of my list tonight is Miss Evie Oddly. Her first look, Vanna White Realness, is. It's not Vanna White. It is game show host glamour-esque, I would say though. I am getting like 90s Vegas vibes with that chunky jewelry, the almost snakeskin green print dress, and that really big hair. And the look not being directly on theme wouldn't have been a major problem for me had the look also been perfect. There were just a couple of fit issues that really held this look back from getting a hot from me tonight. I would like to have seen some tighter tailoring to really allow that big giant hair that she's got on to say something on its own without blending into the ill-fittingness of the dress. As usual, Evie did whatever the hell she wanted, but tonight it didn't pay off in this category. I'm gonna leave this at a soft rat. Her next look, before and after Cardi B. Arthur, was a really great concept. I love that she juxtaposed two complete opposite people into one look. Evie says she made this look herself and she was super proud of it, and I think rightly so. The B. Arthur, I definitely was getting golden girl from it as she came down in the runway in a complete and total characterization, and that look revealed to a very revealing Cardi B look. I will say though, had she not told us that was supposed to be Cardi B, I might not have known. I always think of Cardi B having either that really beautiful long black like middle part hair, or I think of the Invasion of Privacy album cover with that short yellow pussycat wig. The braids were still cool though, and I got what she was throwing down. Plus, more importantly, I think she did a great job of nailing the spirit of this runway and giving us her version of these two wildly different characters. I'm gonna give this look a and in the final category, Realness of Fortune Eleganza. Evie spins the wheel once and wins $1,000, then wins $500, and then goes bankrupt. <sighs> And the color she ended up with was pink. And the direction she took off in for this look was absolutely the right one. I think making pink punk is so much fun to do. She was giving us a sort of ghosty fantasy with a tattered dress and a couple of pink chains. And I'll say what she did was interesting, but maybe not fully at the finish line. For example, if I had this box, and I'm not sure how many chains there were, but I would have really leaned into that chain fantasy to keep on amping up the punk. And I think another easy improvement for this look would have been to have tattered 
up those tights to really match the tatterness of the top. Her ghost left me wanting more. This was a boo rat. Next up, small waist, big talent. It's Monet Exchange. That's her line that she said, by the way. For her first look, Monet says that she is giving us a sexy, thick Vanna White. Her dress is all white and... <laughs> It cracks me up because I just know, like the people watching daytime TV in middle America, if they saw a dress slit that high on Miss Vanna White, they would absolutely have a heart attack. So while the cut of the dress wasn't something that we would see Vanna in, this absolutely was game show hostess. And she did give a nod to Vanna, I think, with the blonde hair and the way that she was carrying herself on stage. The only reason this look didn't make it all the way to a hot for me was because of the fit when you get to the chest area. It looks really bunchy. And then the way the hair and that neckline were hitting on the same side, I kind of lost Monet's neck a little bit there. I'm gonna leave this at a soft rat. And her before and after look is Bob the Drag Queen Elizabeth, which had me gagging. I loved the reference to her drag sister, Bob. Specifically, she had that neon green dress look with the pink paint running down her head, mixed with what seems to be, I believe, a reference to Queen Elizabeth's yellow, very famous, like blazer and hat look. The Bob part, I got immediately as soon as I saw that pink dripping down her forehead. The Queen Elizabeth part, though, I think was a little more ambiguous. I definitely would have just done a traditional Queen Elizabeth hat on top of this to make sure the judges knew exactly who she was referencing. So I think it was a little more Bob than Elizabeth. I am going to give this look a hot because I really enjoyed the fun that she had and the fun I had looking at this look. And for her final look, the luck of the Irish has flushed her with green. Now, Mona says that she doesn't really make outfits and she <laughs> said the last thing that she made was her sponge dress. The look that she delivers, I think overall was cute and I was really impressed with what she did considering that she really does not construct looks. The only thing though is that when I saw this look at first, I thought of Tasha's salad, Roxy's little parody character from the kids show. And I'm not sure if that's exactly what she was going for, but that is what I was getting. Tasha salad. It's me kids, Tasha salad. This is not sound like Roxy. I am so excited to be here today. She's giving us 70s, she's giving us disco, and it is a little strange, but overall, I think it works. The cuts are great. And the thing is, she is selling this outfit like it is the best thing on the runway. So you do enjoy it when you see it. So I'm gonna leave this look at a very safe hot. And no, Monet did not have the most jaw dropping looks tonight, but she maybe had the most fun. And that's all that really matters. Next up, water off a text pack. Water off a text pack. It's Jinx Monsoon. She is the first out on the runway tonight and her Vanna White realness had me busting out laughing because she is wearing almost the same dress as Vanna White herself. Jinx's interpretation though is I would say witchier kind of version with the shawl that she's carrying, which I've got to say would probably be a work hazard for Miss Vanna if she were spinning the wheel and like the cape got caught. Could you imagine it like rips off her entire dress and she's just like staring? Probably why she doesn't wear capes, but black sequins she actually does often wear. The other small detail that I think was maybe missing with Jinx's Vanna White dress was Vanna almost always has her arms or shoulders or like something up in the top area, just showing a little bit of skin. So while her more modest Vanna was very pretty and definitely on theme, I think the dress had a couple of fit issues and I'm gonna leave this at a soft rat. Her before and after look though, oh my God. God, it was so great. She called it Whatever Happens to Baby Jane Fonda, which is a reference to Jane Fonda as Barbarella, which if you've watched every season of Drag Race, you've gotta know by now, and Betty Davis as Baby Jane in Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, which if you watched All Stars 2 was the little sketch actually that Alyssa and Alaska got. This runway from drinks right here, this is why I love her to death. The two references that she pulled in are an amazing blend of like gay pop culture and the way she blended them to together so unexpected and weird but also fun and perfect like she got all of the details right the spacesuit that Barbarella is wearing the makeup that Betty Davis had on and I love that she was able to fully execute her vision and you know exactly what you're looking at and you see both characters the entire time no reveal needed it's a perfect and ridiculous blend of two amazing references this look is hot and Jinx winds up with the color lavender tonight for her realness of fortune runway 
So she kind of starts off with the sewing machine and then decides that she's not gonna sew the look. She later describes outfit construction as her one weakness, which overall I've gotta say, I was impressed with what she was able to do given her admittedly not so great skill set. I think Jinx was also super successful at delivering something that was very obviously Jinx Monsoon. She does this kind of Grecian fantasy thing pretty often. I mean, it was actually her promo for her original season. And then she did a similar style of dress for her promo for this season. So it's all making sense in the Jinx Monsoon world, which is why I'm gonna leave this look at a warming up. Next up, Queen of Balls past, Slay Kule. Shay had some mixed success in the ball tonight, I think. Her Vanna White realness was definitely not Vanna White. I think the judges nailed it when they said it was a little more Audrey Hepburn. And I think mostly it was the hair that threw it off. This definitely could have been passed off as a Vanna White dress. I mean, like I said in the beginning of this video, she has been doing this for 40 years. And if you wanna find Vanna White in a dress of a given color, color and style, you can probably find it. I even found one kind of almost identical to what Shay's wearing. So had she characterized it a little bit more and done, you know, something really obvious like the hair, I think this would have been a perfect look because my God, does she look gorgeous. This is easily one of the prettiest looks on the runway tonight. It just wasn't totally on category. So it ended up with a four flame from me. Also, apparently this dress is pink. Um, a lot of you were asking in the last video if I'm colorblind. The answer is yes, I am colorblind. Shay's before and after look though, she did Gold Tooth Fairy, which I was excited for when I heard, but I think the execution of this was not great. The wings felt a little floppy and all of the details felt a little mashed together. It was kind of unclear where exactly she was going with this because she had elbow length gloves covered in gold watches, which were a good detail. But then on the dress, she had all these like safety pins and then the wings were like flopping on her shoulders behind her, which kind of added to, in my opinion, the overall messiness of this look. And I feel like when she turns around, it just looks really saggy. And for Shay, I'm always expecting like perfect fitting, glamorous, beautiful looks. And this one just really did not do it for me tonight. So it's gonna be a rat. Her design look, she was given the color white and she plays with the idea of not doing bridal because she did bridal in her All Stars 5 ball. But I mean, she is given all white materials. So to not do bridal would be like probably a mistake. This look I think was really interesting because in in some shots, it is stunning, beautiful, and perfect. Like waist up, I love the head wrap, that big giant veil giving her lots of shape and the fit of the dress. Oh my God, it's perfect. But then there are some moments that confused me about it. Like when it zooms all the way out, I feel like the shape of the veil becomes baggy and distracting. And because it's a wedding dress, I kind of was expecting a little bit of a train behind her. It just needed that extra bit of fabric, I think. I mean, hey, call me traditional, but I like a train on a wedding dress. Or I at least like it to touch the floor. I am going to leave this look with a safe hot. Next up, more for Gemini. It's Raja. Before we talk about her looks, let's go ahead and break down the drama, mama. Since Raja is on all winners, there was an open spot on fashion photo review and Violet took her place. The fans finally got what they wanted after Miss Violet went viral back on the season 13 bag ball episode with Trixie Mattel, where she pretty much said no to everyone's looks. It seemed everyone loved her brutal honesty then, but not so much now that she is being honest about her feelings concerning Raja's looks both of which for episodes one and two, she gave the boot. I should note here though that Gottmik did toot the first look, although she did join Violet in booting the second one. And as a result, there was a trend alert that I don't think anyone expected. Violet Chachki, she was the trend. She was literally trending on Twitter this week when people were finding out about the boots. And according to this Reddit post where these people reinstalled the YouTube dislike button through some special extension thing, these are some of the most disliked fashion photo reviews of all time. And here's how all the queens of the queendom reacted. Violet tweeted out when all the hubbub started bubbling, I booted your fave and checks notes, I will be doing it again. And in the replies of this tweet, we can see some fans allegedly getting blocked by Violet as they express um, disagreement with her tweet. And then Monet tweeted out, booting Raja, that's where I draw the line. To which Violet responded, LOL, leave me alone. And Monet said, leave fashion alone. Monet later tweeted, OMG, booted Roger 
twice. I'm beeping, beeping, vomiting, hyperventilating, and crying. All of it everywhere all at once. And then Bob later joined in, quote tweeting Violet's original tweet saying, we've given Violet too much power. Bimini Bamboo Lodge chimed in saying, Raja is an icon and paved the way in terms of mixing fashion and drag. There are many people that came before me that have broken down the barriers so people like me get in these spaces. Miss Fame chimed in, Raja is a boss when it comes to fashion, always has been. And Jada Essence Hall even tweeted out about this saying, LOL, y'all, the girls can handle an opinion about fashion, it's not life or death. And Monet clarified the next day, okay, y'all know we're just being silly with the fashion photo review stuff, right? Mick, Violet, and I were immediately texting about it in real time. Literally no one's mad. And Shay came in to help extinguish some fires too, saying, she booted my pleather principal runway. Like I said, it's not that deep. And finally, we even got responses from Raja and Violet. Raja reshared a screenshot of a tweet on her Instagram that read, the girlies are k-wording each other over the fashion photo review boots, and Raja's just out here tweeting horoscopes, truly giving the Tia vibe she promised. And Raja wrote at the top, I mean, dot, dot, dot. And funnily enough, there was a really timely horoscope that lined up with all of this drama, talking about how the online world would get really crazy. And I'm not an astrology girl, but the astrology was astrologying. And finally, we have a little TikTok video Violet posted to her page where she and Gottmik make, make fun of all the crazy comments that they were getting on the videos. Hi, I need to boo, 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 boo. But I need Violet's opinion first. Yeah, you can't. I can't boot it by myself. Boot, boot, oh. boot, 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 boot. Then I also boot. You're definitely a boot as well. You're a boot. Concerning my final thoughts on this drama, I mean, it's clearly very silly. I think some fans take the fashion photo review very seriously. I know some people take my show very seriously, but at the end of the day, there's real problems in the world and they're just fun little videos. And more importantly, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. And not everyone's opinion is correct, but they are still entitled to that opinion. Now let's break down the OG Queen of Fashion's looks. Now going into this episode, I'm sitting here thinking Raja is going to win. She's going to nail this. This is her challenge. She won both of the design challenges on her original season. She makes, I think, most of her looks. I mean, my God, this was her challenge to lose. And she did, she lost it. <laughs> I think mostly because of just one of her looks though. Her Vanna White realness was amazing. Literally looked like you plucked Raja right out of the 80s from the literal like 80s style makeup she did. That perfectly teased 80s hair with the bangs. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And the dress, so gorgeous. Very Vanna White, but also very drag. Raja took that classic idea of like Vanna showing a little bit of skin, being poised, professional, and then added, you know, big ruffles and poofs and elements that took this to the next level. The only reason this look didn't go all the way to five hot flames for me tonight was the shoe. I would have swapped the shoe out. That seemed like a weird oversight for her. Still an extremely hot look though. Her middle look before and after was unfortunately her downfall tonight. She did Olivia Newton-John waters. And when she comes out on the runway, you're immediately just like, yes, Grease, that's her. There she is, Miss Olivia Newton-John. And you're like, but oh, wait a second, where's the John waters? And it really took me a second to figure out that he was even being referenced because I was looking for that mustache. And when she finally got close enough to the camera for us to see it, it was there, but it was just not there enough. John Waters, by the way, if you're unfamiliar, is a film director who you may know from directing Pink Flamingos starring Divine, who Eureka did on Snatch Game last All-Star season. It's all coming full circle now. I think to really give Half John Waters, she needed to not only do the mustache, bigger, bolder, blacker, but also I think she could have done like a bald cap with some gray balding hair like he has. So as is, we are going to give this look a and for her eleganza look, she is given the color gold, and I lived for her getting gold. Like, that is Raja's color. And I thought, for sure, this would take her to the finish line. What she ended up creating, I think, was jaw-dropping, scrumptious, opulent, beautiful. Ugh. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But I also do think that she kind of created two looks with what she was given. I feel like there's the top part, that beautiful ruffled jacket, and then the bottom part, which feels like a completely different dress. Each part I love on its own. But to get the full five hot flames from me, I just wanted to see it a little bit more finessing between the two different elements tonight. But still insane that she was able to pull off this look and wow, what a serve it was. This was absolutely hot. <laughs> 
Next up, the Vivian. This was the Vivian's moment to shine. She did so well tonight. Her Vanna White realness look is beautifully styled, put together, poised, professional, gorgeous. The only thing I was kind of missing though was a shoulder or arm exposure moment. And hey, that's not to say Vanna doesn't do full sleeved dresses. She sure does, but her signature really is to show off a little bit of skin up there. And I think that was a missing element. I think the other thing that could have made this look really wow would have been to have done it in a highly saturated red. That would have absolutely stunned on the runway. Because as we've talked about, some of these paler tones get a little bit lost in the stage lights, but still a gorgeous look and totally hot. Her before and after concept is Princess Diana Ross, which wow, what a great blend of references there, mixing her UK pop culture with US pop culture. The outfit that she has on is modeled after she says Diana Ross's famous blue suit. And it's a great draggy recreation of that. The spin that she did to bring it into the Princess Diana zone was to style it like it was from the 80s. And she is also, of course, wearing the Princess Diana tiara. And this look is beautiful. My only issue, had she not told us this was supposed to half be Princess Diana, the tiara is really one of the only things that would have clued me in. I think if she had done the classic Princess Diana hair with this and then just done the like, you know, Diana Ross blue jumpsuit exactly the way it was with the tiara on top still, maybe that would have sold it a little bit better for me. But what she did, absolutely fabulous. This look is hot. And for her final look, she's given the color blue. This is a perfectly constructed look. And I liked hearing at the end of the episode about how Trinity was kind of helping everybody after she finished her look and advised the Vivian not to also add feathers to it because it was like perfect as it was. And I knew the Vivian had some amazing fashions, but I didn't realize that she could also construct things like this. And I love that the little flare piece she did on this look was that beautiful fascinator. And that was just enough bling to really make everything pop this look, mm, 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 mm. it's hot. Next up, Trinity the trick up her sleeve tuck. And by the way, Trinity and Jada are scored on my scorecard tonight, both with 15 points. Let's talk about Trinity's looks first. Her Vanna White realness. This is immaculate. It's reminiscent of a Bob Mackie dress that Miss Vanna White wore a couple of years ago. And at the same time, the look is also still very Trinity, but also giving some like 80s tease styling. And I think overall, it's a great blend of Vanna White now, Vanna White of the past, and Trinity the Tuck. This look is hot. Her before and after look, <laughs> RuPaul Charles II. This maybe was the weirdest combination of things that anyone did tonight. It's like, why? <laughs> why did she do this? You know that she literally was just like, who is named Charles? And then found <laughs> this king who was apparently king of England, Ireland, and Scotland starting in 1661 in the restoration period. Thank you for teaching us a little bit of history tonight. But when you really start to dig into the look, you realize it's actually quite genius because she gets to do something extremely opulent, stylistic, and that will really, really impress the judges. The details of this, I mean, perfectly executed from the cape, the little shorts, the heels, but like the heels from the 1660s royalty era, it's so perfect. And then the hair is RuPaul's classic asymmetrical hair. A perfect nod to Miss Ru herself. This look is absolutely hot. And are you ready for her final look? Wow. This look is Trinity at her finest. This is someone who knows their way around their body, every inch of it. She knows exactly where to put cutouts, where to make things fit, and she knows how to do those things too, which none of that is easy. And she brings in all of those little elements that make you know it is Trinity the tuck. The big pageantry hair, the dueling, the straps, the body, the trumpet train, and the peekaboo when she is walking backstage. What Trinity did with all three of her looks tonight was extremely impressive and she is proving again and again. I mean, to go back to back on a Snatch Game and a ball episode like this is next level. Hot, hot, hot's across the board. And finally sharing the top spot with Miss Trainee the Tuck tonight is Jada Essence Hall. I was so pleasantly surprised with Jada tonight. Like I figured she would do well because we know about all of the amazing looks she constructed on season 12. She's got that eye for detail, polish, fashion, 
but wow. Let's get into it. The Vanna White. She did Vanna White in a way that was so Vanna White. Like, you know that she grew up with Vanna White by the way she has styled this, done the hair, walking on the runway. Every single thing is just perfect. She's showing off those beautiful collarbones, the shoulders, the arms. I mean, completely nailed it. She understood the assignment and did the extra credit. Ding, 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 ding. This look is hot. And her before and after look, bag lady in red. This look is insanely good. Jada went out on a limb and fully executed. Oh my god. This, I, I don't even know what to say about it. Like, bag ball who? She has it in the bag? This look to me is just the perfect intersection of beauty, camp, and fashion all in one beautiful Jada Essence ball package. I just have to say it takes a special type of person, I think, to make a look like this look so stunning. It's absolutely hot. And for her final look, she was given the color black to construct her look, which probably was the most challenging of any of the other colors because you can really lose texture and shape doing an all black dress, especially on a stage like this. But Jada knew exactly how to handle that curveball. She said, you know what? That's not a problem. I'm gonna give you every texture, every cutout, every shape, and give you something you will never forget. It was edgy, gothy, punky, totally unexpected from Jada for me. Well, actually, she did kind of give us a little peek to this type of style last week with her Matrix runway. But like, this is what All Winners is for. She is showing us a new side of her, a more controlled, creative, and professional side that is is stunning to see. This look is absolutely hot. And tonight, I 100% agreed with the judges about the top two. Jada and Trinity get their first legendary legend stars. And concerning the winner's lip sync, I did react to this lip sync and the ball runways over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my videos, exclusive videos, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, and more. And you can join by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. But what I thought was that I could see that they were both having a lot of fun and giving great performances, and this may have been the best of the three lip syncs that we've had thus far, but I do agree with the judges. I think Jada took it to the finish line. And she ends up giving the platinum gold plunger to... Jinx Monsoon. And honestly, girl, I probably would have done the same because Jinx said it herself. This was her one weakness. Y'all better watch out. Still think that they should be telling the queens what the challenge next week is so that they can sort of uh, plan that out a little bit better. But it is going to be an acting challenge, so it looks like she made that right decision. Anyways, that was going to be right up Jinx's alley. The other thing I realized, though, with this lip sync is that if you're in the top two, then you cannot be given the golden platinum plunger. So you almost get like an immunity just for winning, which means if you win several weeks in a row, you are not going to be blockable. It seems to be determined though, I suppose. I still think there's gonna be another twist that RuPaul announces like halfway through the season. And finally, my hottest hats on the runway tonight for Vanna White realness before and after and realness of fortune eleganza respectively were Trinity the Tuck, Jada Essence Hall, and Trinity the Tuck. I also asked my patrons to vote on their hottest hots and they've chosen for each of those three categories in the same respective order, Raja. Jada Essence Hall, Raja. And that puts a nice pretty little bow on our ball today. I want to say thanks to today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, who you can check out and download using the link in the description of my video. I also want to say thanks to my patrons for making my channel possible and give a special shout out to Barsing, JG Newday, Sam Moylan, That Pup, Hemlock, Andrea Faluna, Diana, and Brittany, who've all just joined my Patreon at the hot and hottest hot tiers. And Adrian Berwinkle, Aiden the Individual, Alessandro420, Angel, Cyrus, Daniel Dramond, Dark Sighted Otter, David Webb, Dickie, Felicia, Frankie Hernandez, Hector, Hector Simancas, JB Jeffrey Joseph, Josh, JP in Dallas, Laura, Kyle Hermes, Sats, Louis Labrador, Ruff, Mark James, Matthew Burns, Matthew Bauer, Maxi Lowow, Michelle, your Val, Miss F, Neely, Sailor, Steven, Topher, Wheelie, and Will and Tan, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye.